This is the Free Heal Life Podcast, episode number 131. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Heal Life shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. Welcome back, protectors, Free Heal Lifers, Telemark skiers alike. Always good to be back here on Mondays with you all, and I hope you are enjoying your first week of summer ish <laughs> or you're getting ready to uh maybe do some skiing down south on that note i have not heard from anybody i don't even know if you listen down in, in the southern hemisphere but if you do and you have information regarding snow reports when your local mountains opening is there a telemark event wherever you live yes i'm talking to you new zealand australia chile argentina Wherever you may be that you are going to be dropping these this winter below the equator, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Please email me information at podcast at freehealllife.com and we will do our best to shoot it out across the Telemark Pirate Airwaves one of these Monday mornings and let people know what's up. So over in our side of the world, I wanted to thank everybody for tuning in to the Facebook Live with Taylor and Miles from the Free Heal Life uh, shop regarding our protector skis. If you missed it, they did a QA and uh, a live on Facebook like I was saying, but it's now on our YouTube channel. Please check that out if you have any questions or maybe just uh, want to find some additional information about the protector line of skis that we make. We're doing everything in our power to get that information out to you. Answer questions, obviously, more directly, which was the point of doing the Q&A. You can find some additional videos, uh, information, marketing materials. It's all on our website at freehealllife.com. Scope it out. If uh, you haven't gotten anything ordered from batch one, we're dropping these in batches of 25 on the website this year. Uh, there are a few left, very few. I, I think there's only a couple left, but we realize it might not be your size or length that you want, so we are gearing up to drop the pre-order for batch number two. The most excellent place to get that information right when it comes out is when we drop it on our mailing list. If you're not part of the mailing list, go into the show notes. Sign up for the mailing list. We send an a, a email out once a week. It's got information. Uh, kind of aggregates all the content we're doing so you can check it out. We realize not everybody is on social media uh, and that's not the only place that we put stuff out. Uh, we will re uh, release stuff there as well because we want to you know, make sure and hit as many people as possible. But if you're looking for batch number two and you want to get in on the pre-order during the summer so you have the opportunity to get those skis right away when you're starting the the North Ameri or uh, the Northern Hemisphere. Sorry, Northern Hemisphere winter. I always like to distinguish that. Uh, we're happy to get you in in those. If you got questions about the skis uh, after watching videos, Q and A's, all that, hit up customer service at freehealllife.com. We are keeping a staff through the summer, which is kind of a new thing. And I wanted to thank all of you for all the support. People that have ordered the protector skis, uh, remaining stuff that we had laying around after the end of the season, you've probably got a really good deal on it. Uh, just we're, you know, trying to trying to cut some of that weight that we don't need, uh, so that we can keep the payroll moving and keep people working, and we appreciate that. We're going to be dropping uh, a bunch of new lifestyle stuff so that you can rep Free Hill Life and Telemark Skier throughout the summer. We hope that you will uh, consider picking some stuff up. And it helps us continue to do the work, the work of Telemark to keep it going, spread Telemark to all of our uh, friends and people out there, fellow snow sliders that may be interested. And uh, we believe it's an important work and we can tell that you do too because you keep supporting us and we really appreciate it. So with that said, I've got a great podcast for you today. Super excited about this. It took us a little bit of time to sort of put it together with these gentlemen. Uh, as during the winter, it's always a little hectic. We're running events. They're running events and all that good stuff. <clears throat> so Sun Valley Telly is a loose collective of like-minded skiers keeping the Freehill faith alive in the historic Telemark Bastion of Sun Valley, Idaho. 
The current roster took the reins from local telly personality Danny Irie Walton in 2011 with 8 to 10 board members, keeping the good times rolling for the past 11 years, mostly via one obnoxious group text. Through detail, <coughs> though details remain hazy, the quote unquote organization has been hosting annual events since the late 1970s, persevering through multiple recessions, the advent of DinaFit, housing insecurity, and innumerable low snow years before finally being stopped in their tracks by the pandemic in 2020. 2022 marked the triumphant return of the Sun Valley tele event calendar with regional meetups at Bogus Basin, Soldier Mountain, and Rotor Run Ski Area before culminating April 9th at the traditional Hawaiian Nationals Slalom Race and Demo Event. The 2022 Hawaiian Nationals will be remembered by some as the, quote, worst snow we have ever skied, but commemorated by all as uh, one hell of a time with deep crews and individuals answering the sirens call from no fewer than seven states across the West. This year's Hawaiian national or yeah, Hawaiians highlights included 85 racers, free beer from the series sponsor, Sawtooth Brewery, the legendary mega raffle, a DJ reports of a speakeasy tattoo parlor and complimentary demos from allies, Bishop bindings and 22 designs. And our free Hill life crew was there as well. Sun Valley Telly would like to thank their sponsors, resort partners, Uller, and most importantly, their families for facilitating their continued telemark evangelism. So today, I'm joined by three members of Sun Valley Telly. Please welcome to the show, Julian Tayo, Kyle Livingston, and Brendan Coyle. All right, Sun Valley Telly, welcome to the Free Hill Life Podcast. How are you guys doing? Doing super good. Doing great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, excited to be here, man. I'm stoked we finally, finally put it together. Um, so we've got three of you here. So let's uh, let's do some vocal recognition since we don't have video yet on this thing. Uh, maybe do a quick introduction of yourself, uh, your, your name, and uh, I guess your voice is obviously there. So <laughs> that, that should uh, help identify you along the way. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Brendan Coyle. I've uh, been in Sun Valley for about, I don't know, f- almost 15 years now. And uh, yeah, I tell you the whole time. We got Kyle Livingston, recently moved back to the valley up here to Haley, Idaho, after a brief hiatus down in Salt Lake City. And this is Julian Tayo, been in the area about as long as Brendan, and uh, learned to tell Mark Ski here in Sun Valley, Idaho. Awesome. All right. Now I'm putting it together. We were having a little like, have I met you guys before? And now I'm like hearing your last names and I'm like, duh. Okay. All right. <laughs> I remember. I remember. I, I, I know what's going on now, you guys. So that's good. <laughs> um, wait. So, so none of you guys are from that area originally, it sounds like. Correct? We're, we're all transplants. So I, uh, I grew up in, in the Portland, Oregon area. Brendan, uh, you're from Mass. Yeah, yeah. I'm a born and bred Mass hole. Grew up skiing blue ice uh, out east, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. Uh, you know, New England. Uh, and then, yeah, needed needed bigger peaks and bigger hills to slide my ass down. So. <laughs> and then who who's wait who's who's left? Kyle, Kyle. Uh, I grew up in Spokane, Washington. Learned how to ski in northern Idaho, up at Schweitzer. Nice. mountain and then uh relocated to the sun valley area way back in 2006 at the same time as these two guys yeah. uh, simpler times before so. before it was cool before anybody <laughs> wanted to go there so you guys are you guys are uh sun valley locals at this point i mean if you've been there that long um it, it, are you are you guys growing up there Haley and uh ketchum is it growing quite a bit exponentially yeah I, dude, we were, we were trying to fend, uh, we were trying to fend everybody off, uh, sort of block, you know, people from migrating through Salt Lake to, uh, your area, but, uh, it, it didn't work. And so now, <laughs> so now everybody's moved to Utah and Idaho. I don't know, uh, 
I thought we were pretty uncool for a while and it, it kind of uh, helped us uh, have uh, more powder to ourselves, but I do not think that is, as uh, is the case any longer. <laughs> I think everyone yeah. figured it oh. out. So yeah. your Mad Max uh, road block on I-15 didn't work? To no. Keep people- oh, okay. No, we, uh, we just, I, I always say basically our tagline was that we were a, a dry polygamous state. And uh, so everybody kind of was like, no, nah, Utah. I don't know, man. Like, I don't think we should go there. And so nobody came. And then now, now it's like microbreweries and everywhere else. So they figured it out and uh, you no, know, pick a couple brews up and then head up your way. And the skiing's good in both spots. So, um, well, cool. Well, I, I'm glad we got you guys on. It was, it's taken us a little while. I wanted to have you guys on prior to the famed Sun Valley, uh, Telly Hawaiian Nationals, but we couldn't put it together, which is which is fine because I want people to gear up for next year and uh, and talk a little bit about that. But I kind of wanted to get um, since we got bo- all three of you guys, maybe we could kind of do a. a I kind of want to. I want to learn a little bit since you guys are from different areas. I was kind of curious how um, each person kind of got into Telly. It was Julian. Was it you that said you started telemarking when you got to Sun Valley? Yeah, so you know, I grew up in, in Portland, Oregon, and was fortunate to get into mountain biking at a pretty early age, but never really caught the ski bud bug. And uh, when I moved out here, uh, you know, there what wasn't anywhere to go biking in the winter time, at least not for another couple decades here. Uh, and figured I had to learn how to ski, and I I was living with this guy Brendan, who I'm sitting next to, and he said, "Oh, hey." you don't know how to ski you should start telemarking <laughs> and, uh i went out and i bought some boots at, at full retail and uh stripped some g3s off off some tm22s and slapped them on some foam core rosies and uh started sliding around bald mountain wow that's awesome <laughs> yeah just uh just start telemarking man no no big deal <laughs> yeah skip everything else you know <laughs> That's a real friend. If I have, if I've ever heard a story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Brendan, ha, ha, what, what's your, what's your telly background then? So growing up out East, I, you know, as soon as I could, I was on skis as a, a little kid. And that was right about the time, uh, the snowboarding like craze took off. And, uh, I had a bunch of older brothers who all skied and then got into snowboarding really early on. We're talking high backs and Sorrells. And so I did the snowboard thing and we were, you know, early park rats hitting rails, hitting the early boxes at loon, um, you know, doing that whole game. And then when I moved out West, uh, I wanted to get into the backcountry and ski more pow. Well, on the snowboard, I it just wasn't going to work. So I actually was going on a, uh, a hut trip out to one of the 10th Mountain Division huts. And I borrowed my roommates. He's this big Norwegian guy from Minnesota with like a size like 12 foot. And he was on these like 210 race skis. And he was like a telemark racer. And I borrowed his shit. And we went out to this hut for like four days. And I absolutely fell in love with going up and down. I mean, I hadn't skied in, in almost 10, 12 years. So getting back on skis is a blast. But then just hiking around, being able to go wherever I wanted. So as soon as I got back from that trip, I sold like four or five snowboards, all my bindings, all my boots. And I bought my first telly set up. And that was it. I never, ever, ever went back. So Wow. So you literally yeah. just borrowed the Norwegian guys telly skis and just went having never been on telly skis. Correct. I mean, I figured I could at least make an Alpine turn and, you know, like over four days of skiing, like waist deep blower down these coolars. I mean, I, I was hooked. I think I made one good turn and that was all it took. And when I got back, I sold all my stuff and I was, I was in just full on. So that's rad. Also, that definitely explains a lot more about Julian's experience about getting into Telemark after yeah. a, after you just, you know, went on a hot trip <laughs> without ever, <laughs> ever having done it. So you're like, yeah, this guy's fine too. No problem. Yeah, yeah he's an athlete. He'll figure it 
I love it. Never called you. And and so Kyle, what uh, what's the uh, what's the background with you? You said you're you're uh, north, yeah, Schweitzer, right? Is where you said you're you're coming from. Yeah, so I grew up in Spokane, Washington. Learned how to alpine ski at Schweitzer, and then after moving here to the valley in 2006, you know, I was working for this ski resort, and I was alpine skiing. And after two seasons here, I believe it was Black Diamond was out for a demo day at uh, River Run, which is one of the base areas. And they had a couple tele setups and I had always been interested. So I snagged a setup and went up to the top of Bald Mountain, having never done it before and suffered my way down. And that summer at the ski swap, um, I bought a old setup. And that same summer is the summer I happened to move into a duplex in West Ketchum that was right next to these two gentlemen sitting next to me. Oh, no way. We became (laughs) fast friends. And that first winter, you know, I was probably, I probably tellied maybe 10 or 12 times. Um, But after that winter, it was like I sold all my Alpine stuff and I was a full convert. And I guess the current iteration of Sun Valley Telly was more or less born. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a good house. Wait. So what, what year was this? That would have been the summer of 2009 was the summer that I moved into the duplex next to these guys. Wow. Uh, that's crazy. I didn't realize you guys knew each other that long. That's that's pretty wild. It's been a long time. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're thick as thieves, man. <laughs> Well, that's funny because I, yeah, like like I said before we hopped on, I was like, have, have we all met in person? Because like I know like Julian was down at the shop and I happened to just be there and bumped into him and um, but you guys said you guys were all at uh, a Whiskey Jacks uh, movie showing, which was always pretty. That actually was a pretty cool venue um, when I was doing movies. Uh, Whiskey Jacks for people that have not been to Sun Valley, I believe it's still there, right, gentlemen? Well, it burned down, but uh, <laughs> it melted back up. Okay. But this whiskey. Yeah. When did it burn down? I think that was, uh, that, that must have been uh, fall of 08, like October of 08, if I remember correctly. Oh, so this, yeah, it would, yeah. I would have come through there after that because I think, I, I don't think I'll, I only went through there like twice. I think, I'm trying to even remember when it was. It might have all the I way back in 2010 or something. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. your event was in the new rebuild. I think, whiskeys, yeah, from what yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember the big screen. The big screen. Yeah. I think you may have done both. You may have been at the old venue and then the new venue as well. I do remember I did try to show the movie in Haley one year and like completely bombed it. <laughs> I remember it was like one of those shows where we showed up and we did it at like the odd like a community. Uh, community college auditorium or something i don't even remember Uh, what it was but like nobody was there it was so funny and i think that was in the days when we didn't realize like if you didn't have beer available basically no one's gonna show up so (laughs) so uh that became kind of a common theme like bars were a good place to show so whiskey jacks worked out well but uh okay so this this you guys were at that i mean obviously now the timeline makes more sense to me and i was always aware of sun valley telly from my old friend danny walton who you guys are familiar with Um, absolutely (laughs) and he if i if my memory serves me correctly i'm pretty sure in that era probably 2010 i think he was still running it because he was doing that and then um uh marley in the mountains i think was another thing he was kind of involved with if if you guys remember that yeah, yeah, his he would put on uh, pretty much like reggae shows in the valley. Yeah, yeah and that, uh, yeah, he was he was doing those concurrently, and I think it was oh eight oh nine. Um, yeah, I was kind of new in town, and uh, you know, just looking to get involved. I've got a, a habit of liking to do work for free, <laughs> I think call it volunteering, and. Uh, and Danny uh, kind of took me under the wing and had had me go around and, and do postering for the events and get up some of the local uh, the local bars and restaurants and shops for for gear for the raffle 
the the notorious, infamous Sun Valley Telly raffles. Uh, and so, yeah, that was my original involvement. You know, traded some gear, or not even traded, inherited some gear from him. And uh, yeah, that was kind of the the segue, the transition. Uh, I would I would say that um, led to us all kind of getting into it yeah Dan, danny was kind of the one-man army because not only was he like promoting sun valley telly and putting on the events he was also like filming and competing in big mountain stuff and traveling around and he was sponsored by everybody under the sun and so he was just the one-man show and now we're more of like a conglomerate of misfits, <laughs> just like a bunch of us. I mean, like we recruit, you know, a guy or two a year, you know, to fill a specific role. And now there's now there's a group of us doing it. Whereas Danny, Danny, I, he just did it as a lone lone ranger, which is pretty impressive. And it was, uh, you know, he he carried the torch, you know, by himself for quite some time. Yeah, we're we're more of a hydra now these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that that's what was you know that's kind of when it came on my radar because I I honestly I don't even think I've skied Sun Valley ever to be honest with you. I've always been there in the fall, like we were talking about like movie tours and stuff. But you know, I I knew Danny, I think from Rosignol, if I remember right, because I think. I, there was some connection there back in the day and but I, I i've always been curious I don't, I don't know if you guys know the history of how this all got started because one of the cool things about sun valley telly in my opinion is you guys are over the 30 year mark for that for the hawaiian nationals right like what was this year 30 something no man we we were we dated it to about 45 years what well, it's older than us <laughs> no way okay so let's talk about this because this is what's kind of funny is there are very few events that have um the real marker in my opinion was the nato north american telemark organization dickie hall's thing on the east coast in vermont that made it 40 years so now it's kind of interesting because that's that was a that ended a while back and now there's uh Midwest Telefest is in the 30s. And then I don't honestly, I, I think you guys might be the oldest as far as I can tell. I don't know. But anyways, I'm curious, where where are you dating it back to? You've obviously like bored into a tree nearby and carbon dated the uh, Telemark history in Sun Valley. When did it when did it start? Who started it? Do we know who started it? So we, we have some early, early posters, and uh, it started, I think, with a group of friends. And the, the group they called themselves, I think, was – it was just two or two chicks and a dude. That was the name of the group? That, yeah. that was the name, that's the name <laughs> presented, by, presented by two chicks and a dude. That was kind of their their like conglomerate group. That was the that's the earliest poster that we have kind of in our archives. Uh, who, if that was the very beginning, or if maybe they were the second iteration of who started the whole thing? I mean, fortunately, we we're steeped in a lot of lore, which which you know is is kind of the best part. You know, there's there's people who will show up to our events and it's just like, Hey, like, Oh, are you looking for your son or your daughter? No, I used to put these on back in the eighties, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, I wasn't born yet. Rad. You want a beer? Like, did you get an apple ticket? Cool. So, so now it's going to be like some guy showing up. He's like, I'm the dude. And you're like, no shit. You're the dude with two chicks. Like oh, I'm so interested. It's yeah. Happen, yeah. So, so nobody knows who the dude is or who the two chicks were. As far as we know, the earliest events were in the late 70s, like 1970, 1977, from, from what we know. And some of the earliest versions of, the, of what I've heard. So I've, I've got a, a buddy, Craig Davis. He worked for the resort for almost 50 years, and he was one of the original telemarkers. And I you know, yeah, heard bits of lore over, you know, decades knowing him and 
he told me that one of the original races was the the three pin downhill they called it and it was a top to bottom run on baldy uh which is 3100 feet of vertical on the warm spring side and it was a le mans start and there were only two classes edges or no edges what <laughs> yeah and it was just total chinese downhill style and that was as that was one of the earliest events and then we don't we can't quite place at what point hawaiian nationals was born but the terminology uh from what we understand refers to the fact that a bunch of the guys who were you know telemarking at that time as soon as the mountain closed would just go to hawaii after uh after the winter and just hang out for the spring go surfing so uh that is where the nomenclature uh you know comes from to the best of our knowledge this is hilarious that you guys kind of don't know and you're also creating yeah. folklore at the same time <laughs> <laughs> Myth and legend. like well, what, what happens is we get these like tidbits of history like i a few years ago i had a guy come up to us and say, hey, I used to be involved and in, in help out. And I just started picking his brain. He goes, hey, I got all these old posters and I want to get them out of my garage. Do you want them? And so we just started collecting. And it's it's this is how it goes. I mean, it's been through a bunch of different people's hands. And it's like every generation takes it up and does their thing with it and, you know, tries to keep it going and keep it alive. I mean, we've had some years where like numbers were pretty low because it's raining and you're on ice because it's springtime and it's just horrendous conditions and just like, you're just doing it because you got to keep doing it. And so like when we get these little tidbits and these little stories, we just kind of tuck them in and, uh, you know, just try and like learn as much as we can from the people who, you know, kind of gave us our foundation and built this thing before us. Yeah. That's crazy. That's cool. I, that's really cool because that probably does go back further than anybody else. As far as I know, I, I mean, if it's late seventies and there's sort of like a continuous route through the whole thing, um, yeah, you guys might have it. I think I think you guys kind of tout that right when you when you promote it, but um, that's interesting. I wonder I wonder how we could get more information on that. It sounds like you guys are sort of just getting it piece by piece, like people just show up. You know, um, I don't even know how you'd find those types of people, but I, I think we need to start writing it down. Yeah, yeah. would be the first step. I think know. too, like putting a call out in the community here of saying, hey, like maybe get the library involved and say, hey, we're gonna have a night and anyone with any story or history from any of the telly, early telly stuff, come come and educate us young guys, even though we're not that young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's, I would, I, I would love to get involved with helping with that in any way I could. I mean, even if I was just there listening, because I mean, that was the whole idea of the podcast too, was, you know, I would meet people like you guys, like out in the wild, you know, and it's like, oh, okay, te there's like this telly crew in Sun Valley or, you know, Colorado or this little town, whatever. And um, it's interesting, right? Like, I think Telemark has this incredible history, but it's like all oral history. It's not like written down or maybe it is, but it's like on someone's poster, <laughs> posters in a box somewhere or uh, that's been an interesting thing with the podcast too, is I've interviewed people or even tried to get them on the podcast. Like I'll be like, Oh, I got to get you on the podcast. I really want to record like some of the history. And it's funny because yeah, I, of course I'm like fanboyed out cause I'm like into it. Right. And they're like, I don't know. I was just like hanging out doing my thing in 19, you know, 80, <laughs> whatever, you know, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Do you guys think there's a lot of that history? Uh, do you think there's some people around still in Sun Valley that maybe were there in the late seventies? Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's a, you know, one thing I've observed and you know, it was something that we found success with in marketing our events is that, you know, us, us Luddite telemarkers uh, tend to use Facebook uh, coincidentally. Oh, interesting. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, in here in the Valley, there's, there's a great like, group called you know you're old school and catch them and 
people will post up old stuff every once in a while. And a lot of times when, when they're throwing up photos of, uh, of skiers in the seventies and eighties, it's, of uh, you know, guys in the back country on, on three pin gear. And I think we could put a call out on that forum and then tapping out, uh, you know, a couple of the, the legends, you know, Danny Walton, Michael Cranick, who had it before Danny, uh, there's a couple of patrollers we could talk to. Um, you know, I think the guy who carves the Sun Valley Sun with the chainsaw every winter out of ice, he's he was one oh, of the, yeah. the OGs. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, artist. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he carves a Sun Valley sign out of the with a chainsaw, like an yeah. ice, ice sculpture. Yeah, yeah, big big thing out in front of the lodge up at Sun Valley every year. They bring him in, and it's. It's an impressive snow sculpture, and yeah, he, he gets after it. it. Makes that that connects some dots for me right there. <laughs> that sounds like something a telemark skier would be involved with. Yeah, he's like, oh yeah. oh yeah, the guy that cuts the logo with the chainsaw. That he's a telemark guy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. I I love that. So that's what's you know, and that's it's funny talking to you guys because really. I think this is the essence of our larger community is it's made up of these smaller microcosms, you know? And I mean, I think we're kind of nailing it too. No one's ever written any of this stuff down. And it's funny cause I think maybe the old timers don't think it's maybe important. I don't know. It's important to me. I, I can't speak for everybody else, but you know, like I love talking to you guys and you're like, this thing dates back to the seventies. It's older than us. And it's like, it's but but it, it is it's kind of steeped in this like you know folklorish thing where you kind of like I'd never even heard the guy's name before Danny like till you just said it you know and uh what sorry what was it Mike did you say Michael Michael yeah Michael Cranick and uh he I think is still a practicing lawyer here in the valley really interesting yeah. does, does he still tell him by chance or has he kind of moved on from it he's shown up at a couple of our events over the years huh. yeah um, but I don't, I don't know if he's still actively telemarking, but I'd love to, love to connect with them. And, you know, it's, it's on this list of like things we should do and we got to, we really got to tap into the history and, and document it because it's, it's pretty rich. You know, there's from just the events themselves to, you know, and listening to your podcast, Josh, you know, the history of the, the progression from leather to plastic, like we had the Scott boot factory up here and there's rumors of people taking the plastic cuffs and strapping them to telly boots, you know, concurrent with all the pickle barrel shit that was happening in Crested Butte. No shit. Really? I've never heard that part. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, I think there's really some you know, we, we got to get it, got to get it written down. We'll, we'll get some papyrus and some quills and <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're just about to knock that original Scott boot factory, I think down. We That's, should probably get in there. It, no, it's, uh, it's, it's already the junk shop. Oh, I, I thought yeah. it was antique alley before it was uh, the Napa. That's it's, funny. I forgot. I totally oh, yeah. forgot. Scott was from there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Scott, yeah, rich history of industry here, and we had we had uh, what were the ski research dynamics and yeah RD. Oh, dude, the RD Coyote. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, we were swooping those out. Oh, uh, when we first moved here, those were our first pow skis because they're like a hundred, what one ten underfoot and stick straight with no camber. And I remember getting a pair of those with Rivas for 10 bucks. They were white. <laughs> and I skied them as my pow ski for like two years and thought I had just reached the top. Remember we tried to bend some into reverse camber? Yeah. 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 It didn't work. <laughs> no, it did not work. <laughs> you guys tried to bend the skis backwards and make yeah. them reverse? Oh, like my great. God. Yeah, that was in one of the garages of the duplex where the three of us met. It was like a mad laboratory of like <laughs> telemark gear in there trying to figure out how we could just like bargain shop our way to better stuff. I wish I would have started this podcast earlier, like back then, if I had had any inclination so I could like somehow document <laughs> some of this stuff. <laughs> oh my God, that's pretty funny. Um, I didn't, yeah, I guess you guys, that's what's so interesting to Sun Valley is not that far from us, relatively speaking, but you guys kind of are in like this little pocket, you know, like it's, it's kind of, 
it does i guess it does kind of dead in there right like at the sawtooth like it yeah does, we're kind of we're easter island over here man yeah it doesn't really go yeah you, it doesn't drive through to anywhere you know it just kind of no. you just mm-hmm. end up in sun valley and um i mean the mountains are incredible um but yeah it's it's uh not it's not even that out of the way I, in fact that just reminded me didn't you guys have like some crazy train that went to sun valley back in the day that like all the this, stars used to take to go up there yeah, and stuff the snowball express it was the original influencer marketing program started by avril harriman in the 1930s man oh yeah it was, she made clothing didn't she no he was a railway baron oh railway okay <laughs> i'm thinking of something yeah. different yeah, yeah. Avril was the dude who brought everyone up here, and they they had this spur line that came up, and then up in town, kind of located where the YMCA is now in Ketchum, they had a big loop turnaround where the train would do a full 360 and point back down the valley, and they would uh, you you could take a train here from all over the West Coast, and you'd come up to ski for you know a couple weeks at a time and. I, I kind of wish we still had it. Now now it's a bike path. That's nice, but the train seemed pretty killer. Monorail. Oh, monorail. Bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> like some speed train from somewhere. <laughs> uh, that's, wow. You guys are getting my brain going. I'm like, oh, man, there's so many cool stories going on up there. And uh, I guess I didn't really realize how much... Uh, yeah, how I like you guys really do have a lot of history up there with this, not just with the event, but like it kind of gets me thinking. Like, okay, yeah, who were the first Telemark skiers up there? Um, you know, how did they find out about it? Because the more I'm doing this podcast, the more I'm realizing, like, you know, Crested Butte always gets sort of a lot of credit. New England gets a lot of credit, but like, there's kind of these other places, even in Utah, and uh, and you know, places like where you guys are at, where people were telemarking around the same time sort of this mid to late 70s and like i don't know anything about it it just completely fascinates me that it just sprouted up like simultaneously in all these places which is really interesting yeah so, we'll have to we'll have to try to snip out some of the the original players in the game up here because uh, i know they're still up here and i'm i'm sure we could find one or two who would want to wrap with you for a little bit yeah well and that you know i think the biggest thing like when you said it's like we got to find the time we got to find the time you know i think this is a one thing i wanted to hit on with you guys is the this isn't a full-time gig obviously like you're not sit. i mean it would be cool if you guys were sitting around planning hawaiian nationals like 365 days a year you know but uh you know it's a volunteer gig for for people putting on these events i I wanted to kind of hit on that because one of the things I always like to try to, you know, encourage people is like start an event, you know, and, you know, or a gathering, you know, that's like the whole world telemark day thing is, you know, you can make it as simple or complex as you want, but really it's just about saying, Hey, we're going to meet up here with fellow telemark skiers and we're going to go ski. But, um, with you guys sort of taking it over from Danny back in the day and, and, and to today, like what, what, I guess just enlighten the listeners out there. Like, what is it like running in a, like a single day event even, or a, you know, what, what goes into that? And, and I don't know, like maybe a little crash course or, and just pulling the curtain back a little bit, like what goes into it and, you know, how it's, it's harder than people realize, I guess is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll start by saying there are eight of us. Um, who, who are all eight or nine of us who are all doing it. So you got three of us on the podcast. We've got Ashton Wilson, who is a huge force behind a lot of our obscured social media postings. And we've got uh, uh, Connor Madigan and Justin Malloy, who are uh, you know part-time ski techs, you know who who help put this thing on. Um, we've got John Anderson who works with the local brewery, Sawtooth Brewery, who's our title sponsor for the series. Um, and, you know, a lot of other folks on the periphery, Tess Malloy, Justin's wife, you know, a lot of folks who are, who are making this happen. I think what we found success in, especially in some of these kind of leaner, you know, post benefit telemark years, is uh, that many hands make light work. 
Um, so that's, that's, I think the most important thing for anyone who's wanting to put on an event. And I, I think in addition to that, uh, you know, having a good relationship with your venues is really important. Um, you know, we've, we've got stronger relationships, uh, through the resort, you know, from a variety of places. I used to manage events for Sun Valley. So maintain those connections. Um, we've got, you know, folks who ski patrol down at Rotor Run, which is our local community ski hill. Um, so we're, we're taking care of there. Connor Madigan's family works with Bogus Basin. So I think having the really strong resort connections, you know, because they're really the gatekeepers to, you know, in the best sense of the word, to, to us being able to have a public venue for, for a telemark event. So. Yeah. And a lot of times with like a bigger resort, you know, they're going to, if you're going to try and do a race or something like that, there's definitely going to be like some fairly sized fees. And if you're just trying to do a community event, it can be tough. And they, they might also want you to carry a fairly large insurance policy, uh, which if you're just trying to do this as a community, it's tough. But like, if you're trying to do just a meetup, a gathering, I find that like some of our smaller resorts that we work with are really more open arms uh, for that sort of thing, where it's just kind of a, hey, come out, we'll hang out, we'll have a good time. You know, if you're new to it, you might get some pointers for some people who have been in it for a long time. So it's really just like the smaller resorts, it's, it's more like, you know, hey, we want to come out, we want to promote your little cool resort, which we like and love and want to come ski, but we also want to get some people together and share, you know, the love of your resort and our sport, you know, of telemark skiing. And so that kind of creates like a really cool community atmosphere, which I think a, a lot of people kind of, you know, can get behind, which is which is super nice. So and then with the smaller events, one thing we like to do, especially more recently, is like we just show up with a bunch of gear, especially to like places like Soldier Mountain, yeah. Bogus, Rotor Run. We show up, we lay a bunch of tele skis out in the snow. Brendan's got about 20 pairs of boots in the back of his truck. And yeah. We just all bring our old boots and stuff and we lay it out and we just let people try it if they're interested. Yeah, it's the only time hoarding pays <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you. Uh, it, I love that you guys are doing that because I, I'm what's the reaction? Like, are you getting people like when you throw all that gear out and you're like, Hey, go try this. Are people doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Like yeah. we, and then it's like the same thing. It's like, this is so much gear that we've just compiled and acquired and just have. And so then it's like, they're stoked on it. It's like, Hey, everything's for sale, man. You want to get into it? Like here, here we go. Let's trade. Let's partner. <laughs> You can buy it. I mean, we had a local shop when they stopped selling tele gear, they were going to throw a huge box or multiple boxes of, of spare parts out and it ended up in our possession. Ooh. And so now when people come, uh, they can go into the gearbox if they're missing some pieces or something like that. We probably have it. I had a guy this year, he had been looking for a part for four years and we hooked him up. Like another chick, she needed leashes. It was like, oh, your leashes are worn out. Here you go. Here are some new ones. Yeah, we got some guy on vacation who posted on the Telmark Skier Forum on Facebook saying anybody in Sun Valley have yeah, like a G3 throw or something random, and we were able to connect him with some parts. Yeah. Wow. I That makes me jealous. Isn't that weird? Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy with the parts. No, but I, I think that's beautiful, you guys, because that's, that's what it is. It's all about that. It's like like it's just proximity like i really i always feel like the conversations come back to this and you guys are nailing it it's like there's this community i love the the lots of people makes light hand is, sorry what was the quote like uh makes, many hands make light work ma yeah many hands make light work i mean it's uh it's really the essence of the whole thing right like it's like you have this community and it's like this little cell of people in this area and you guys can self-sustain, you know, you got gatherings. It's not like one person has to carry one huge load and the parts are there and you got, you know, essentially rentals quote unquote, <laughs> you know, uh, but people can try it. They see it. They're interested. They can try it. And I think that goes a really long way. And, uh, yeah, that's awesome. You guys, I, you know, I was going to, you brought up soldier mountain, which I think by the way, wasn't, didn't Bruce Willis own soldier mountain at one point randomly. 
He did before he donated it to the uh, Camas County Recreation District who sold it at a loss to a couple out of Bend, Oregon who recently sold it to a family out of Utah. What? And they're <laughs> operating, you know, pretty well. So, Chick. yeah, we love the mountain. That's amazing. I yeah. yeah, not to throw the Bruce Willis thing in, I just like had that random fact floating in my head when you said Soldier Mountain. I was like, wait a second. Uh, yeah. But uh, you guys kind of branched out this year, and, and and you guys sort of had like a little Sun Valley series. You know, you went to Bogus, you went to Soldier, Rotor Run, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Okay. And so, am I missing any of them? Uh, no, those are the only ones. Rotor Run, series. Soldier, then, Bogus. Rotor Run, Soldier, Bogus, and Sun Valley. And then yeah. Sun Valley. Yeah, I mean, is this kind of where you guys see it going? Do you guys feel like after having done that little bit of a series, like it feels like the steam's there to sort of continue doing something like that, like a multi-event sort of year. Yeah, I, I think so. Like bogus has been, this was our second year at bogus and we just kind of did like a meetup jam. And the first year was a big learning curve for us going down to Boise. Uh, and we, we probably had, I don't know, six seven people come and ski with us and there was only a couple of us who went down and then this year we showed up we just put up the banner and we're kicking it on a cooler and talking about gear and people just started coming out of the woodwork and then we started heckling and that like got more people to show up and by the end of the night we were doing it was a night event as well which was super rad and you know, by the end of the night, we probably had 30 people hanging out with us and it, it was a blast. I think that's the way it's going to go. I mean, Idaho has so many small mom and pop resorts, especially ones that like a lot of us haven't been to. So for us to go and do just these like jams and like meetups and hangouts and like if we can throw a small raffle and get people stoked and get people to like try three demos and maybe get into it like i think that's really you know a direction that we like as long as as like alongside of having our big events up here at sun valley i think it helps us build momentum too toward hawaiian nationals because we have to promote it especially in boise and these other places and then by the time hawaii nationals rolls around in the spring it's like people have heard about it yeah told some friends about it yeah there's how many people did we have this year? Yeah, it was, it was a really started. natural arc, and like you know, we felt the energy locally at at Road Run. But by the time we hit Hawaii Nationals, um, we had eighty five racers, which is the most we've had in in about ten years. Um, and and then just having the demos there, you know, not just our speakeasy demos out of Brennan's truck, but you know, we had twenty two, and we had. Uh, boys from bishop and telly colorado out and you know that was that added some serious legitimacy to to the event and you know attracted you know people coming over from from bend and from washington um you know people who are looking to try out gear and and we kind of had it all in one place it was like it was a it was a symposium of telemark it was really pretty special to see it all culminate like that in april yeah, that's interesting. Are you guys icon? I can't remember. We are this year. Uh, we were epic for the last three years, and then Mountain Collective before that. But we're we're switching over to icon this year, yeah. which uh, I think everybody's pleased about. And Mountain Collective is back too. Yeah, this year. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. I mean, you know, that does open it up to people coming from various areas for opportunity to, you know, their ski pass works in a different area. So there's an incentive to be there. Um, you know, so maybe, maybe that'll draw people in, you know, and I mean, you guys, yeah, you kind of hit on it. I, I think even in Boise, I don't think, uh, Idaho mountain touring's carrying telly anymore. Are they, do you guys know? Is there uh, is there a shop in Boise carrying telemark? I guess I don't I haven't updated myself in a number of years I, there. I don't know if Idaho Mountain Touring still is. They might, but then the other one that's become kind of the sleeper one is the uh the outdoor gear exchange. Uh they're more of like a consignment shop okay. of outdoor 
of outdoor stuff. And I've always had, you know, super good luck, uh, there. A, a lot of times when I'm in Boise and I meet tele skiers, I tell, I, that's where I send them. And I said, you know, you, you just, if you live down here, go check them out every couple of weeks and you might come up on something. Um, but as far as a dedicated shop, you know, anyone who's like really still in it, I, Ooh, I don't know. I don't think anybody's stalking you up here. Yeah. I know but, you guys you are, know, you're well, in- back, they still have a tele jig. We know where the jigs are. That's yeah, they, have, they, have jigs, they, they don't. They don't have. I don't know if they, they have any demo. They might no, have some demo no, stuff. No demo no, stuff. They do. I think it's all. I think they divert to us now. Uh, a lot of times, if someone needs tele gear, one of us in the crew will get a phone call, and we try and facilitate as dirt baggy as we can. Yeah. That's actually kind of funny. That, like, I kind of laugh at it, but it's kind of like almost sad in a way that like the jig the jig has become like the uh the pinnacle of uh where are the jigs <laughs> uh no that's funny though and that's cool that i mean maybe who knows maybe you guys are going to be running a retail shop in the winter before you know it sun valley telly re- retail shop uh you never know you never know yeah yeah we the, there's you know we got. We all got a lot of free time, right? Boys? There, 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 there could have been. There could have been like a hint of dread as I said that. I'm not totally sure. I might be who, sensing who something. Needs another, another more expensive child. Yeah, I mean, it was easy to get you guys on the podcast, you know, and yeah. coordinate schedules. So I'm sure like a Five shop months. would be easy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny, man. Uh, no, but I mean, I, I think you guys are in a similar situation to a lot of places where there's like a desert and it's crazy. Cause you think like you guys are in a mountain town in a ski town and like you guys are holding it down. I mean, thank God there's somebody there. I mean, going back to the folklore thing and all that, I mean, there is a level of tradition and it's like, I guess this is my unsolicited uh, cheerleading for you guys because I'm like, go, 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 you know, but it's like, if you didn't have these small little groups, like you guys doing what you're doing, what would it look like? You know, like, what would it look like? Where would people find a G3 heel throw if they're in town and hitting Facebook up or, you know, a gathering or, you know, and, and I just, uh, I think it's so important what you guys are doing up there, you know, and I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, and obviously the whole crew, cause like you said, there's a lot of people involved with it that aren't on the podcast, but, um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's a big part of the future you guys. So wh- where do you guys see it going? I guess on that note, where do you see, where do you guys see sun Valley? Is this going to like hit the hundred year mark? I mean, w- when we're all long gone, Will people still be rocking Hawaiian t-shirts and talking about stories from Sun Valley? You know, as, as we've been saying to ourselves since uh, we took it over in 2011, you know, it's not going to die on our watch. So, uh, you know, until we can feel comfortable passing the torch, uh, you know, in, in full, yeah, I think we're going to, we're going to keep carrying it. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of us who are making it happen and, at this point, it kind of feels easy to be quite honest. Um, you know, we've got we've got a very active uh, group text uh, with all of us on there, and uh, you know, it's a little quiet in the in the off season. But um, no, I think we've got enough spirit, enough energy between between the, the eight, ten, whatever it is of us. Uh, also, I almost forgot to mention Nick Smith, Mason, and Mose Dushano, who have been just crushing it with us for about as long as we've all been together. So just wanted to throw their names in there too. But, uh, you know, there's to that point, there's so many of us, there's such good energy. We've done it so many years. It just kind of feels easy at this point. And, you know, we, we have more and more people every year saying, Hey, I'd like to help out. So, um, yeah, we, we got a couple guys who might, might be probies, uh, joining, joining the gang, you know, next year coming on you know we we might you know actually start having some uh you know titles and positions but i think as far as the future goes you know we're we're all young dads and we're having kids and these kids are all going to the events and seeing the stuff and you know not only are we hoarding cool old ski gear for ourselves but now we're starting to hoard (laughs) kids uh telemark gear because we know within the blink of an eye our our little rippers are going to be you know 
you know, we're going to have a kid's class that's going to be really deep and I'd say about five or six years. So. And they're all female too, which is kind of terrifying. Yeah, watch out, <laughs> watch out Big Mountain. Oh, Sometimes that's awesome. Like Big Mountain, yeah, girl dads. <laughs> You guys all you guys all have girls? Yeah. Yeah, uh, all of us. Oh, that's awesome. I was going to ask you, you know that's funny cuz I was I was kind of curious um if you guys ever thought maybe you get like a kids program going or something, you know? Like and and I'm not trying to get you guys on the hook here, but like I mean, I feel like that's one of the hardest things that has come and gone in a lot of places like in Salt Lake. I mean, we had I've talked about it like we've had two or three programs simultaneously but it's kind of funny because you get like i always say it's uh the coaches tend to be the parents and once the kids age out it sort of sort of disintegrates right so it makes me wonder if like you guys have the ability you know to to put a little group together and and uh i don't know have a kids program at some point or if that's even crossed your mind I know one of our guys, He uh, he's the education director for the local environmental resource center, and he he's very much outdoor education oriented, and I know that's been uh, a goal of his. Uh, I'm talking about Ashton Wilson, and he... Uh, you know, he, he's really into doing that and trying to get people involved. And I think with so many of the kids here, I mean, our ski team, the Ski Education Foundation here in Sun Valley is so big and so deep and is just such a pipeline of tremendous athletes that even just doing like a crossover demo day. I know one of the local private schools does uh, some backcountry stuff. Uh, you know, even even one of the public schools, they, they're doing some kind of just like avalanche education like early on. Uh, to kind of get kids who are growing up in the mountains, like just aware of the fact of, you know, hey, there's dangers out there. But I think going back to the kids program, I mean, yeah, that that might be something that we would be getting involved with, especially, I mean, the fact that, you know, most of our kids are going to probably be involved with it at some point, but just to get kids to try it. I mean, you already have kids who, you know, they do everything. They do every activity up here. I mean, everyone's so, you know, outdoor oriented you got kids who are skiing snowboarding they skateboard and mountain bike in the summertime you know you have figure skating and horseback riding and little climbers and just all this other stuff so i think it's just one more thing that these little outdoor rippers can throw in their quiver what we're gonna need though josh is gear a lot of teledactyls send them (laughs) we need kids gear we're hoarding some but we're gonna we're gonna need some. It's we're never not, we're gonna be coming down. <laughs> well, no, I mean you guys bring up a good point. I mean, I think that's that is gonna be a future conversation. Is like they're not making those anymore. So now you know we've all got to ask that question: like, who's gonna pick up that torch? I mean, there's possibilities out there, but it 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 does beg the question of like, how do you get a hold of that stuff? Because you know, as we're talking, it's like, you know, there's obvious opportunities, whether you guys started a kid's program or not. I mean, there's kids potential programs out there, which is, is crucial, but yeah, it's like, how do you get gear? I mean, we're sitting here talking about you guys unloading truckloads of gear just to get adults on it, uh, let alone kids. So I think, yeah, it's an important question for sure. We got to buy the molds and start 3d printing man. I hope you guys went to school for something like that. Maybe (laughs) (laughs) we're all just a bunch of ski bums that get on a podcast and we're like, yeah, we're just going to get the molds and make boots. And then all of us are looking at each other. Like I thought you were going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, that's uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I think the gear proximity to gear opportunity, you know, it's, it's creating those opportunities. Um, that was one thing I was going to ask Julian too, is, uh, having worked with the resort, you guys sort of hit on it, but like that relationship is so important to have with a resort, uh, wherever you live, uh, whether you're, you know, doing a gathering meetup jam, whatever you guys want, you know, whatever you're calling it, Uh, Julian, you got any insight having worked at a sun. So sun, sun Valley is, uh, is it just Sun Valley and Snow Basin at this point? It's same same owner. Is that still the, yep. still the case? Okay. Yep they're they're part of a, a bigger hotel group, um, but Snow Basin and Sun Valley are the are the ownership group. And you know, I think the biggest thing, you know, 
especially it, it really came to us at Sun Valley around probably 2013, 2014, but the need for contracts and insurance and just, you know, reaching out to your resort, seeing who has the bulletproof contract, you know, where they can just plug and play your name um, or whoever your entity is, but then also having access to that insurance policy and, um, you know, we're, we're really grateful that Sawtooth Brewery uh, is willing to extend uh, their their insurance policy to us, you know, which covers special events. But, you know, most local businesses, um, if you're if you're a local regional promoter, event promoter, um, you know, reach out to one of your title sponsors and, and see if you can offer them the opportunity to sponsor your event in exchange for your insurance policy which involves a huge amount of trust. And we're, we're really grateful to, you know, Paul Holly and Kevin Jones, owners of Sawtooth Brewery, who, uh, you know, extend that trust and extend their policy to us every year to make it happen. But um, having having access to an insurance policy is, is pretty good because a single day insurance policy, if, you know, just, you know, you or I were to go out and buy one uh, that covers, you know, 1 million per occurrence and 2 million general aggregate, um, it, you know, it's, it's going to be about eight hundred dollars, uh, but it can sometimes be up to fifteen hundred dollars. So, finding a, a legitimate sponsor with a real insurance policy is really key, and just identifying whoever it is in your resort that is, you know, kind of the the keeper of the keys for making events happen. So, whether their you know title is uh, is is uh, race department manager or uh, mountain events manager or special events coordinator, but figuring out who that is that you need to talk to and, um, you know, just finding that, that conduit to, to making it work. Yeah, no, I love that. Thanks for breaking that down. Cause I think a lot of people, they might hear, you know, people talking about events and they're like, you know, getting encouraged to do it. And then they're like, uh, who do I talk to? What do I do? You know, and that's a big part of it. And and I think that's one of the cool things about what you guys are doing is, I mean, Sun Valley is not a small resort, you know, and uh, for you guys to have that sort of tight relationship there, I think is amazing. And I think that's going to be a key for small telemark events moving into the future is just this ability to maintain a, a great relationship with people and, you know, uh, dot the I's and cross the T's and make sure you understand the basics of how you put on an, on an event, you know, at a, at a local mountain. So, well, that's rad you guys. All right. Well, kind of to wrap up, what's, uh, do you guys have any inkling? I know it's early, but do you have any inclination of what is happening in Sun Valley telly world next season? Do you guys same, same lineup or do you guys think you're going to expand an event or not or anything like that? I think what we've done in the past, like we're going to probably, it'll probably be like a very similar lineup to this year, hopefully. Um, but one event that I would really like to, to see come back, uh, we did it two years ago was a, uh, it was a gear swap and maybe, you know, pair that with like a movie or a premiere or something like that. I think yeah. it'd be super rad. Uh, our local brewery title sponsor, uh, Sawtooth Brewing, you know, they got a great, great place to do that and i you know i i hope we can add that one on as like an early season kind of like stoker for the coming you know snowfall so if if we get that one paired on have have five events maybe if we throw a curveball sixth onto another another you know mom and pop resort somewhere in the the south of idaho i think that'd be uh you know chipmunk pomerel Ooh. Ooh, Palmerell. Ooh, oh. That's Burley, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Palm Palm I don't know. Uh, it's a Blizzard Mountain. Blizzard Mountain. What? Yeah. Where is Blizzard Mountain? Arco, Idaho. Arco, I I all it is is a rope tow, and it just looks so sick. So oh, I'm dude. Club. Let's do that. I want to get involved yeah. with, Ooh, with Blizzard maybe. Mountain. Oh, Lost Trail would actually Trail. be my jam. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I'd go all in at Lost Trail. Yeah, we got a we got a lot of ski areas up here. Let's let's figure something out. Especially little sleeper ones that are super rad. I don't want to blow up all our spots, but still. Yeah, I know. There's, I was gonna say, you know, like there there yeah, there's a lot of cool spots, and I know each one's got a little telly crew. I mean, Brundage is there. I mean, I would love to see you guys at Pebble Creek, honestly. 
I think we had 11 uh, kids show up from Pebble Creek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all crashed in Ashton's house. Really? They were supposed to pipe down the night before the event. Yeah, there, was... there's a mean telly crew out of Pocatello. And I got to say, their T-shirt this year was rad. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited. And they, they were talking – asking us picking our brains about events so i would love to go visit them on their turf and yeah. see, them, see them put on an event too so let's just get out there yeah. we gotta make that happen yeah yeah if you guys haven't skied that uh that mountain it's legit like it's it's got some vert to it and not not in all everywhere but there's some really good ski in there and uh it's got a lot of soul you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's cool. So I, yeah, I would love to see you guys expand or, or at least like mentor. Yeah. If you got like a little group somewhere and they're coming to your thing and, um, that's, that's rad. I think that's what it's all about. So, well, I, Hey, you guys, I really appreciate you coming on. This has been rad. You got, you got my brain spinning with all sorts of like, what is the history of Idaho? Sun Valley Telemark, you know, <laughs> so hopefully you guys can dig into that a little more. I'd love to love to have you guys back on before, uh, at least, uh, the big event next year. But, um, yeah, it'd be fun to coordinate, uh, sort of maybe even a preview, you know, once you guys get the whole schedule dialed in. Yeah, we'll, we'll get some peer reviewed research going and, uh, come back with some history for you. Yeah. Dig up some old timers for me and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll bring them on. <laughs> And we want to see you at Hawaii Nationals. Yeah, yeah. I know. I I owe it to you guys. I owe it. I owe it to myself. You know, to to come up and do that. So I'll uh, I'll, let's just make a commitment now. I'm I'm gonna make a commitment. I'm coming to Sun Valley next next to Hawaii Nationals. Nice, let's nice. Do it. Just Love you're, it. you're gonna come as a participant. We'll take care of everything else. You just. You just come and hang and 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 just enjoy enjoy it all. Yeah, no, I I would love that. It it'd be a lot of fun. I'd love to see everybody up there and uh, and participate. So, all right, boys, we'll have a uh, have a fantastic summer, and uh, we'll try to catch up with you when the snow starts falling again. Sounds great, Josh. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. See you guys. Ooh, doggy. I love talking to those guys. Always fun and uh, love getting some more. I got some cool history tidbits uh, about Sun Valley and sort of the history of that event that I, I wasn't expecting. You know, uh, we talked a little bit about that um, sort of the Scott factory cuffs. And uh, after uh, what we we're talking about is sort of that pickle barrel thing, if you weren't listening too closely, but uh, sort of the plastic cuffs that got modded onto the leather boots back in the day. Funny enough, literally the next day after I recorded that conversation with those guys, I saw a picture and sent it to them and we were both laughing. It's like the oral history has been confirmed. So cool to know, you know, a lot of people probably don't think of Sun Valley uh, as maybe this historical bastion, as we said in, in the uh, introduction. But I think like a lot of places, Telemark has had these little roots and strongholds in these areas, you know, and it, maybe it's not the spot that everybody's heard of, or there's, you know, like, I, like I've said over and over again, you know, Crested Butte gets a lot of, a lot of play, Mad River Glen, but there's these other spots where it's like, you know, these people have passed it on for generations now. And, you know, they, maybe that, maybe they didn't, you know, they're just having a good time and throwing parties and doing events. Uh, and I just love that. So fantastic conversation with those gentlemen. And, uh, I'm looking forward to going up to that event myself and, uh, visiting old sun Valley. So like I said, at the beginning, we're going to be dropping batch two of uh, our protector skis. The mailing list is the best place to find out about that. And you know what? The mailing list is the best place to find out about anything going on in Telemark because that's what it's all about. Obviously, it's going to be free heel life driven, but we want to make sure that you're connected to the uh, you know the larger free heel uh, Telemark community, free heel life community. Of course, we want you to all be free heel lifers. Ooh, little slip there, right? Uh, no, but we want you to get information every week. What's going on in Telemark? What events are going on? Um, what gears coming out? What videos did we just put out? You know, is there a new Dosti's view uh, or, or some other program that we're doing? 
We want to make sure you're tuned in there. Uh, we keep all of those emails to ourselves. It's something that we we want a tight relationship with you, and uh, we don't want to just share that information with everybody else. So you have our word that that's where it's going. So sign up for the mailing list. Uh, you can always shop with us at freehealthlife.com. Like we said, we're going to be dropping a lot of new designs and re-upping on the really popular stuff in our lifestyle line. We want you repping Free Heal Life. It helps us get through the summer months and continue to do the work to build Telemark, to get the word out to people. And of course, I appreciate you listening to the podcast because that's a one great avenue for us to get this information out to folks. But yeah, you can shop freehealllife.com and you can email me, podcast at freehealllife.com. Uh, I'd love to get a Q&A session going uh, or you know, a mailbag rather uh, with your questions and I will give the answers. So I guess it's kind of the same thing. Podcast at freehealllife.com goes directly to me. Customer service at freehealllife.com goes to the crew at the shop, at the retail shop and the HQ. So really appreciate all of you out there. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being a free heel lifer. Thank you for being a telemark skier. And absolutely thank you for spreading the word about the podcast to your friends. And thank you for subscribing. If you're one of those Apple podcast listeners, I always like to encourage you, take an extra second, rate the podcast, and please leave a review. Uh, I'd love for it to be five stars, obviously, because I want it to be the best telemark podcast on the planet, uh, in, in the galaxy or however far this goes. Uh, but please take a second and do that. Uh, it means a lot to me, helps us get the word out to other people when they're looking for, uh, snow related podcasts. And that's really important to me. And I always want to shed more light on telemark. It's rich, uh, telemark, it's rich history, it's gear, how to get into it and all the awesome people that are out there like today in Sun Valley Telly, getting to know people that are putting it on the line to put events on and keep things rolling. So with that said, I will see you next Monday and I cannot wait to have another podcast. I've got another great guest coming up and uh, would love for you to check it out. So until then, brothers and sisters of the turn, spread telemark always. Peace out.